Welcome to the Philly Zo Show. This is episode six, y'all. Episode six. Man, honestly, I feel like it's a great episode. We covered a few things. Um, I asked you the question, do you believe people deserve a second chance at loyalty? I don't know. What do you think? It's up in the air, you know? That's the first thing we started with. I definitely touched on, like, confidence. Like, just, just some basic mechanisms of confidence. Like, I think that's important. Um, we touched a few current events. It wasn't a ton of current events. I think what I had to say about AI was more profound than maybe anything I had to say at all. Um, I had a little sneak snippet at the salesmen and the leaders this this episode was a little bit rushed in a sense like i didn't have a ton to discuss but i still had a few things to say and i recapped sports at the end i hope you love it i think it's great enjoy the episode look right i'm gonna get right to the point loyalty do people deserve a second chance at it that's what we're gonna talk about today right i know off the rip the first thing you're thinking is like no people don't deserve a second chance at loyalty that's what i hear most people say and that's fair that's fair However you see it is how you see it and, and what you should go by. I'm going to give you my perspective on loyalty and whether or not people deserve a second chance at it. There is such thing as toxic loyalty. Is it such thing as, you know, going along with the flow, maybe in a relationship at a job, you're not happy, but you, you're showing your loyalty. Because what is loyalty? If I'm not mistaken, by definition, it's showing your allegiance to someone or an institution. I believe we can show loyalty to ourselves. And that's where the root of my perspective comes from. So my belief is, yes, we do deserve a second chance chance at loyalty in life with people or with anything. However, it's certain standards that you have to meet in order to reach that sense of loyalty with yourself, other people's institutions, whatever you subscribe to. Loyalty is important. A lot of people use this term, but they're not, in my opinion, ready to, to attack what comes with this loyalty expectation. And expectation is as I break it down, hopefully I can help you understand that expectation is a big part of this loyalty. I want to say this, right? It's mainly when it comes to dealing with people or dealing with events that you felt like this person wasn't being loyal to me, right? And I know for a lot of people, it's a no-no. Some people might even believe loyalty doesn't exist. I think loyalty exists. I don't think it's as simple as a lot of us make it seem, but we're not willing to do the work to reach that understanding. Like we have this expectation that we all see loyalty alike. And to be honest, a part of me agrees with that. But a part of me understands that this is not realistic. Loyalty as I see it, may not be loyalty as you see it. To me, that's realistic. Why I say that is because we've been bending the rules of loyalty. So when we we recreate the rules of loyalty, it's important that we have this conversation to understand how does this next person see loyalty? You see, because as I break this down, I want you to understand that embracing uncomfortable conversations is how we're going to overcome the idea that loyalty, the second chance of loyalty, is deserved and it can be earned. What loyalty means to me may not mean the same for you. Trust. Trust is the cousin of loyalty, right? How do we build trust? Do you give yourself the chance to trust someone? Are you so broken that you don't give yourself the opportunity to trust someone? Are you so heartbroken? Have you dealt with that heartbreak? Sincerely, are you giving people the chance to be who they are? Because that's necessary to build trust. That's necessary to gain loyalty. Are you so set in your ways that you create expectations for someone or you create out ground rules that this is how things need to go so you don't give a person a chance to be themselves with you. So now when they cross you or you feel like they crossed you, now you feel like they're being disloyal. Because you set the standards of how you want things to be. You haven't given this person the opportunity to show you who they really are. I believe in not fighting against the moment so much. You don't fight against who people really are. That That's the best way you're going to get the best version of that person. And maybe you're going to have to move on. You see who someone is and you know it's not for you, realistically, right? But I don't want to deviate too much. We're going to get into the loyalty. So I know a lot of y'all feel like, yo, if you cross me, you lost me. I don't agree with that. I agree with you cross me, you hurt me. Now it's our time to have this uncomfortable conversation to unpack whether or not we can move forward or whether or not I got to do what everybody say, cut you off. Y'all so heavy on this. I'm going to just cut them off. I'm going to cut them off. I'm going to cut them off. And cutting people off is healthy. It's not It's, it's not like it's a bad thing. I'm not saying cutting someone off is a bad thing. Give people the opportunity. You've been, you've been given a lot of things, opportunities that may not deserve this opportunity, right? But you can't give a friend or a relationship an opportunity because you so heartbroken. Broken? I think y'all really bitching. I think y'all genuinely scared to have uncomfortable conversations. That's what I believe. Why is an uncomfortable conversation so important? It's important because that's how we can get to the root of the problem. So that's why we need to redefine loyalty. You may not know how I see loyalty. I may not know how you see loyalty. So how do we see loyalty? For the most part, we believe this. there's this bracket of how we should see it. But like I said, we've been bending the rules of loyalty. And I don't always agree with bending the rules. Since that's a reality, I'd rather just embrace that that's the reality. This is what you did. 
did to hurt my feelings. And if we can't have this uncomfortable conversations about our emotions, then we can't move forward. But I want to tell you this. When you step into that uncomfortable conversation, you want to step into that uncomfortable conversation with a sense of empathy. Meaning I'm not coming into this conversation just to solely be right. I'm coming into this conversation to understand. After understanding, I want to express myself and hope that I'm understood. Give yourself this opportunity to attack this uncomfortable conversation first before you completely cut someone off. Maybe it's more growing that y'all can do together. Maybe you guys can reach a deeper place, right? A deeper sense of understanding, overstanding together. But no, you, your feelings just hurt. You cut you cut them off. You bitching. You bitching. You scared. Uncomfortable conversations are the way. Facts. Step into these conversations with a sense of direction. Where do we want to go on top of this conversation? Are there boundaries that need to be set? I think as always, boundaries need to be set. Be clear in setting these boundaries. And you also have to know that coming into this conversation, remove expectations. Now, the reality is this conversation with a lot of us, it needs to happen sooner than later. This is where you want to start. You giving anybody a sense of time, friend, relationship, dating, you're giving anybody this opportunity. You're giving them your time. That should mean something to you. Start with the end in mind. Start with the end in mind. Once again, that's something we talked about last week from Stephen Covey's book. Start with the end in mind. If you know that the end of a relationship or friendship for you can be a sense of disloyalty, right? This person has graduated from acquaintance to friendship, right? This this woman or man has graduated from dating to spouse. Let's start having an uncomfortable conversation sooner than later. Me personally, I would suggest it before we, you know, meet that bridge so we can see how we align, right? But I don't want nobody to lie to me. I'm not going to set you up to lie to me, right? I want to know who you really are or how you really see things or maybe the lack of how you see things and how we can possibly grow from there. You get what I'm saying? Like y'all set high expectations on people and at the same time, y'all run away from the reality so y'all won't be hurt. You setting yourself up for failure is what I'm telling you. Yeah, so people deserve a second chance at loyalty. You deserve a second chance. You ain't been loyal to yourself. You ain't been showing yourself no loyalty. If you look at your behaviors, your patterns, and everything that you've been doing, your actions, have you have you been giving yourself a chance, a second chance at loyalty? Have you been loyal to you? As soon as somebody, you feel somebody did you wrong, it's, it's a rap, oh, it's over, I'm cutting them off. Right but y'all running back to them. Y'all running back to them. And y'all not being genuine in these processes. Listen, people make mistakes. Ain't nobody perfect. I think cutting people off is overrated personally. If I'm giving myself more time and you feel some type of way, we can have a conversation about that. But for the most part, I'm just locking more so on me. I ain't cutting nobody off. I don't, I don't feel the need to cut people off unless I got to cut you off. And even in the cutoff, it still, to me, requires a clear conversation. Clear conversation is the way. Clear direction is the way. Clarity. People deserve this. You deserve it for yourself. The best part, the most holistic part of this process is when you're that trans transparent you can let go easier you know when you embrace that conversation it's not going to hurt you months weeks years down the line because you dealt with it you faced it head on now you don't got this grudge but y'all holding grudges because y'all not being clear y'all not embracing the uncomfortable conversation don't force this uncomfortable conversation when the time is right that's when it needs to be done now i've been put in positions where uncomfortable conversations needed to happen but it was being prolonged. It was being prolonged because whoever I was, I needed to have this uncomfortable conversation with, let's say it was a spouse, right? We was in a relationship. It's certain things. These joints are taking, it's taking too long to get to what needs to get to. And a person is acting like everything is okay when they know there's things that need to be addressed. That's still a sense of loyalty. I was being loyal at that time. That's called toxic loyalty. It's a blind loyalty, right? That's why I said, you be loyal. You give people jobs these second chances and you don't embrace this uncomfortable conversation and you hurt yourself you know this you hurt yourself in that process seek clarity seek true understanding seek true overstanding seek that and you won't look at loyalty the same you guys have to meet in the middle it can't be one-sided because that's also still a toxic loyalty we have to talk about it if we can't talk about how i feel or or the necessity because all of this is going to take a lot of compassion right if someone isn't meeting you in the middle that's a clear indicator that you have to cut them off you may have to cut them off just to revisit this later you might have to tell someone listen i'm uncomfortable with speaking to you up until we can speak about this event because every time i'm around you i have this sense of resentment that this conversation is not being discussed be clear use your 
words. But people deserve a second chance at loyalty. Yes. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Because nobody is perfect. Look how loyal God is. I'm not saying you God. I'm not saying you God. But God's loyalty is unmatched. You can minimize a ton of pain with being clear and embracing these uncomfortable conversations. So to me, your definition of loyalty, y'all building on resentment. Because I, I discussed resentment last week and I felt like I didn't really make it as clear as I wanted to be. Right. And I, I don't know if I'm still ready to make it clear. I think over time it'll come natural. But I know it's something I wanted to talk about. But what I know I can say is we have a lot of belief patterns reinforces us to build this plaque of resentment within ourselves. Yeah, that's not healthy. That's that's not a join. That's not a join. No, that's not. Resentment, man, is painful. It's hurtful. You know, this idea, fuck everybody, fuck this, fuck that. You saying fuck them, they're not even worried about you. They, they got their own shit going on. They, they, they got it going on. You know what I'm saying? Like, they got it going on. You know, but you hurting. Forgiveness. Forgiveness is power. Maybe you can't have a conversation with them. Maybe you just have to embrace acceptance more. You know, because there's a saying that I accept things as they are because everything is supposed to everything is how it's supposed to be, right? And I'm paraphrasing Deepak Chopra, but I accept things as they come because everything is how it's supposed to be. Yeah, facts. Everything is how it's supposed to be. Now, obviously, a lot of this, you got to remove your ego. Your ego is inflated. Your ego is like a balloon that's ready to explode because you told yourself this world revolves around me and you lied. I'm sorry to tell you, you lied. You're living a lie. Now, with toxic loyalty, that's Obviously, like nobody should embrace toxic loyalty. We need to reverse engineer toxic loyalty as soon as possible. Facts. Hey, yo, I show up for you every day and you can't, you mean like not just one time you you can't meet me in the middle? No, that, I mean, like, what are you talking about? Like, no, nah, what you mean? I didn't do nothing to you. Yeah, that's that's these are clear indicators. This person is not empathizing with you at all. But you want to carry on with that? People believe in actions. People believe in actions. When you let people know that it's a wrap, it, don't, it doesn't have to be a spectacle. Show them what I'm pushing you towards is making these steps and not carrying off all this weight, this weight of resentment, right? This weight of disappointment. Because it's going, it's going to come. These times, they will arise. How do you address them when they come? That's what's important. Lower your expectations for people. How am I going to know if I betrayed you if I don't know how you perceive loyalty, how you perceive friendship? What are your basic rules? So we have to communicate. We have to communicate. We have to get this clear understanding. What are your boundaries? What are your no-nos? That has to be clear to me. And don't only lead with your no-nos. What's completely unacceptable. Lead with more of who you are and what you want, how you want this friendship or relationship to go. Because I'm not a mind reader i can't read your mind talk to me i may break your heart many a times throughout this process but communicate with me we, we got to keep the communication going we have to and we have to try our best to remove our emotions in dealing with this communication it may be emotional it may be heartfelt let the person's emotions be their emotion embrace uncomfortable conversations to build this loyalty to build this trust or to rebuild the trust how do you rebuild trust after breaking someone's loyalty or breaking someone's trust how do you rebuild the trust right first First, let's be clear. Let's apologize. But before we apologize, I want to understand not that I'm deflecting from accountability or responsibility. I want to genuinely know what areas hurt you because it's some areas that hurt you that might be a part of my personality. So it can it can be often that it hurts you. But don't run away from being transparent as to what hurts. You, right. Let's get the Let's get to know each other a little better throughout this process. What did I do that hurt you? Right. I apologize for this. These were my intentions. I think I can do this better moving forward. Facts. After that, that, you got to be consistent. Now it's time to show and prove. Now it's time to show and prove. Okay, you know, I trust this person. Their loyalty is genuine, right? Be patient though. Be patient too. Patience is going to be needed throughout all of this process. Somebody showing their best version of themselves for two weeks. Don't look forward to their downfall. Don't be that type of person. Don't look for them to crash out or to not be their genuine self because everybody can't be their very best that you want them to be every day, but they might be able to be the very best for themselves. So be patient. Give people the opportunity to be who they are. Are. That's how you can grow with them, whether it's a friendship or a relationship. Don't only set people up to be who you want them to be for you to the point they're not being themselves. That's toxic loyalty. You want that genuine loyalty. So you have to genuinely embrace uncomfortable conversations. You have to genuinely be patient. You have to genuinely show up and be consistent for someone to trust that you are who you say you are or you are who you set out to be. Cutting people off is overrated. Do it when it's necessary, but don't take a shortcut because you're afraid to have an uncomfortable conversation because now you bitching and this is going to carry on you're going to keep being in your feelings you're going to keep being disappointed and then you'll say fuck everybody i don't trust nobody trust none you hurting yourself we don't believe you these proclamations we don't believe you deal with what's hurting you deal with it facts and 
I also wanted to say this. How can you believe in loyalty or a second chance of loyalty if your sensitivity is so heightened that you're not even forgiving and you don't embrace forgiveness at all? I'm not saying sorry to them. I don't care if they said sorry to me. Listen, you got that attitude? Good luck with loyalty. Good luck. Good luck with trust. Good luck. Good luck with peace. And when you're embracing these conversations, embrace this. Okay, I understand why I wronged you. I'm sorry. Can you please forgive me? I will try my best to do better. I may not be perfect, but I sincerely apologize. That's where you want to get to. You want to get to, I sincerely understand how you feel. If you can't leave a conversation saying, I sincerely understand how you feel, you got to ask yourself, what part of that conversation were you playing in? You might have been talking a lot, or you may not have just been listening. You may just been hearing somebody out. Embrace listening, active listening. If you're an active listener, you leave conversations saying, I understand how you feel. I overstand how you feel. To summarize everything, redefine loyalty together. Lower the expectations of thinking that this is how this person sees life or this is how they approach loyalty. Have the conversation before cutting someone off. It will leave you with a lot of clarity. It will leave them with a lot of clarity, right? Don't just be so abandoning. Show up for yourself by having these uncomfortable conversations. You're going to you're gonna build up a lot of strength with this pattern, this habit of approaching things that may not be the most pleasing, knowing that you won't hurt yourself so much in the future. And listen, there is a big consequence on giving people second, third, fourth, fifth chances that you can get hurt. The reality is you always can get hurt. There is no perfect situation that you're not going to get hurt. The divorce rate is extremely high, right? With people that committed that we're going to be together forever. Can you imagine how much they neglected in the process of working on this together. So I'm going to say this too. No, I'll leave that. I'll leave that for a segment later about Ebony K. Williams. I'm going to talk about Ebony K. Williams and I'll bring that up. So yeah, this is going to take growth, healing, not so much of judging the small things. Let things come and go. Some things have to come and some things have to go. Don't get me wrong. Trust your gut. I'm always going to tell you to trust your gut, but embrace the process. Embrace the process. Friendship, marriages, relationships. Embrace the process. Everybody's still dealing with themselves, not to mention wanting to sh- having to show up for you. I said this in the last episode. People's intentions are not as bad as you think they are. They're just not. You don't have to agree that people need a second chance at loyalty. I don't want to convince you. I'm not a convincer. I just want to think, I want you to think about those fundamental processes and starting to gain someone's trust or, or wanting a sense of loyalty from someone. I want you to think about that. And I want you to think about where does that align? Where where does this fall in place of our, our relationship? It could be a friend. It could be a spouse. It could be a manager. It could be a, you know, it could be a boss at work. Let's meet each other in the middle. Let's think win-win. Let's start to think that I'm going to do what's best for you in the process, knowing that you're seeking to do what's best for me so we both can win. That is also from Stephen Covey. Seven Habits of Highly Effective People is a must-read book. It's one of the last books I read, but it's a must-read book. And I plan on starting to read again. I've been reading articles and things like that. The things I talk about, I, I, I'm reading again. I'm just not reading books, but I'm reading. I'm for sure reading. I'm for sure doing research now. Because a lot of things I'm going to talk about, I can't speak about them without doing research. So, yeah, I'm, I'm back to doing research. I embrace the responsibility that it takes to speak on certain things like this facts outside of my creative mind just having these things on my heart i embrace like we got to talk about some of these things because a lot of these these topics are lacking they're lacking big time you know and people just walking around mad people are walking around with these new proclamations of how they see life and it's just not true i don't believe you you don't got me convinced but you're missing the work in between to understand how did you get there how did you get to if you crossed me you lost me yeah, how did you get there mm-hmm. and why are people crossing you what do they got going on with them empathy matters compassion matters to me don't make everything about you this might be the time that you guys need space yes embrace letting someone know i need space to deal with this i understand everything that you said i'm really not ready to tackle this head on maybe we have been moving too fast maybe we've been moving too fast and yes they can't meet you in the middle they don't see any light in what you're saying in in, in, in embracing or approaching this uncomfortable conversation there is no need to be loyal there is no need to be loyal but someone with an ounce of effort may may be worth that time but i wanted to move on to a topic that i feel like is extremely important and i want to just touch on it a little bit i might not go too deep into it. i want to touch on this i might not stay on it for too long building a true sense of confidence i talked about self-talk previously talked about affirmations i talked about overcoming adversity today we're going to touch on growth mindset but i'm not going to 
tackle it too deeply. It's already very trendy. A lot of people are already talking about it. So it's a lot of places you could see it, right? But I'm going to tap into the mental resilience aspect. Like I said, I don't put, I don't like to put anyone in the box. I personally don't put anyone in the box. No. I had this conversation with one of my best friends. I had to let them know that like, you're the shit. You was the shit back then. I still look at you as the shit now. Like you got it going on no matter where you at. And it's not cap is what I genuinely believe about this person, right? No matter how they have been seeing themselves or how things were going on, it's still like, I still see you how I seen you back then. Like, I don't care what you've been going through you know that to me that doesn't define you so to me that's where you find that true sense of confidence it's like really knowing like you the shit at some point in your life you was the shit right for me i think my my prime years was like between 14 and 17 years old where i just felt like i was just the shit like i just i know my confidence was through the roof it's been it's definitely been more through the roof then than it's ever been outside of me learning and things like that maybe 19 20 it, it got to that again but around 15 16 years old like my confidence was truly through the roof somewhat tap into that place for you before i started this podcast i told myself like and i had this conversation with someone and i was like yo do you feel like at 16 you would tolerate or 17 18 19 you would tolerate some of the things you've learned to tolerate now He's like no like you was more sure of yourself at that time so i know like that's why i say that time like even though i've gotten better i learned more over the years i was extremely sure of myself around 16 years old so to be honest lately i've been embracing embracing that youth within me because i know it's still a part of who i am but i only say all that to say that you're the shit like you really is the shit yeah yeah no matter up or down you're the shit that's the language i'm the shit that's the language that you use facts but if you're saying that you don't believe it it don't it don't matter because you're lying to yourself no, we don't believe you like you need more people facts but sincerely i want to tell you this stop limiting yourself if you catch yourself saying things that are limiting or thinking things that are limiting like yo i want to do that but i know i couldn't do it because cut that shit out asap yeah yeah cut that out that is not progressive you will reach no progression with this language pattern make your language pattern remarkable make your language pattern so outstanding that you shock yourself that you even thinking like this think big think big yeah that's the true sense of confidence aim at something that you'll never be able to reach aim at something you'll never be able to reach like me i'm a 14 figure nigga like facts i'm a 14 figure nigga i'm a trillionaire on god i'm really gonna be a trillionaire wait till you see that i'm going to be a trillionaire yeah first First black trillionaire of all time facts or second third you feel me i'll probably be behind hold i mean i'm just gonna pass everybody and be, yo he got a trillion i got a trillion cuz on oh god be remarkable be outstanding be phenomenal facts no but i didn't even really tap into the mental resilience i'm gonna tap into it right now embrace adversity as the true learning curve that it is like it's really that simple now in this process maybe it's so much that you have to learn take it one step at a time it might not be as much of you as you have to learn you might have been doing one thing thing wrong or too much of one thing or not enough of one thing figure it out sit think find someone that's already successful at it ask them and a lot of times is you're not trusting the process all of everything comes with a process everything comes with a process i don't notice so much about podcasting because i just started podcasting but i play football majority of my life so i know everything comes with a process i know six months of working hard and smart beats eight years of working hard yeah i, I do know i know that specifically from playing football i know that from specifically from playing football. so to me like efficiency works very very closely with effectiveness and growing so as much as you want to be effective always ask yourself where can i be efficient how can i be more efficient along with my effectiveness i also learned this in seven habits of highly effective people this book is golden shout out to stephen covey you know rest in peace to stephen covey i would have loved to meet him but if i feel like i know him because how much i learned from him knowledge is power and in a lot of realms knowledge can be timeless in a lot of realms knowledge can be time trust the process in building this confidence learn true commitment embrace true commitment and commitment is not something that you can talk about commitment is shown it doesn't need to be discussed is shown in your action show me how committed you are in what you do not what you say learn 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 and listen don't be so rigid that you think that you can get to your end goal only one way there's so many ways you can get there it's a million ways to build true confidence the first thing you have to do is start second thing you have to do is be committed after that the world is yours baby the world is yours everything i discuss will be universal i promise you embrace the process we're going to talk about some current events some things that stuck out to me it wasn't too many current events but there's a few things that definitely stuck out to me 
um, this week that I felt like, you know, it's beneficial to speak about. So we're going to get into that in the next segment. Ebony K. Williams had some interesting comments about essential workers. She used bus drivers, Uber drivers as an example, right? Her initial comments, she was having a conversation with Iyanla Vazant, which is a lovely woman. Both are lovely women to me, right? She said, I'm not going to marry a bus driver unless he owns the company. I get her main point because when she went on the breakfast club to try to explain herself, she made a second point that I sincerely agree with. And that point was she discussed people not unlock untapping their full potential. And that's where I believe she should have started. I think her approach was horrible. I get her main point, um, but I also don't agree with all of her points. So I don't agree with bus drivers or Uber drivers being mediocre. If that's all she needs as a single woman looking to date someone, is somebody of this certain status, that's cool with me because that's what works for her, right? That's I've said that in the last episode. Whatever works for you, is I'm cool with. But a lot of people, as we can see, they're going to create this person in their mind that doesn't exist. You get what I'm saying? They're going to create a person that doesn't exist. And that's why I agree with what Miss Ian Vazant had to say where she said she would date a bus driver. She would date a bus driver in the event that he's good to his, his mother, he's good to her, and he truly loves his job. Because to me, someone's happiness and their content is immeasurable. You can't measure that. What does it matter what this person is doing if you now giving yourself the opportunity to miss out on a wonderful person that's decent, that's loving, that's caring, and that meet, that may meet all of your needs as to what the of what you've been looking for on how you can be loved. So that blanket statement, that part was irresponsible. The part that she said that was responsible was when she discussed people tapping into their full potential. The job is mediocre. So to me, she threw out a lot of different things. It, 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 it could be a little confusing. Let's get into exactly what she said. Once again, I don't know if I could play it, so I'm going to paraphrase what she said. So she said the job is average because of by, by definition. So I think she focused on the wrong things. I don't, she, didn't, she didn't focus on the right things for me. To say that the Uber drivers and bus drivers are average just because of the pay, because that's what it really comes down to. She, she mentioned skill, but she really mentioned the pay more than anything. I, I feel like that's what she was focusing on because she said it's a job that doesn't demand a lot of skill. To me, that's really covering up that her main focus is the pay, right? Because there are a ton of CEOs that are most likely shitty people right or you can have a, a great title and not be producing anything for instance i have a media company i started in 2017 it hasn't produced anything but technically i'm the ceo of it right yeah her focus is off and this is that focus that i was talking about or this you're going to create somebody that doesn't exist because she's not a married woman using this and to me that doesn't really matter as much but she hasn't produced the results of what she is looking for some people are happy that they can spend time with their family work whatever time they want want to work they have the opportunity to do uber or doordash they can work and it's working out completely where they want in their life everybody's ambition is not the same so i don't really like those blanket statements i think it's very irresponsible overall her point is mute because she called all these essential jobs mediocre you know what it's, it's so mediocre remove the jobs and keep keep the uh ceos and the people that own these this operation of essential work is so important the pay shouldn't scale out whether or not it's mediocre it, it's a it's a false reality it's just really false to be honest the focus should be more on how undervalued these positions are. Teachers. Teachers are one of the most important jobs in the world. Our society chooses to pay them very low. That's an issue. <laughs> that doesn't make their job mediocre. Their work is not mediocre. Their work demands a lot of skill. You know, especially the better you are at it, it's just it's invaluable. There is there there actually is no measurement of the value of amazing professor and um, an amazing grade school teacher. There that's an invaluable position, you know. A great bus driver people that transport our goods and so, like she's bugging out she's bugging out you get what i'm saying so yeah that's why i wanted to make that point i don't believe that mrs ebony k william embraces how lucky you are or how lucky someone can be to actually get married or reach this successful long-standing relationship right like for me i'm cool with being single for however long i don't know maybe when i want a child i probably look at that different um but personally having no kids i'm cool with it now i know eventually i want to keep my legacy going i look at it like this on average i think for me just just my perspective i'm not saying this is true on average i see that three out of ten women are potential wives right that i might be attracted to knowing me knowing 
for myself, I would say one in 50 women are potential wives for me. People that I would really want to pursue a long-standing relationship with. So I look at it like I have a 2% chance of ever being married. Everybody's number might be different. Some people may see people and they just want to love them and be in a relationship with them right away. I've had those moments. I'm not really like that as much as I used to be. It's really rare that I'm on some like, yo, I fall in love with this person. So I'm because I want to qualify and, you know, and the type of girls I like a lot of the times they're not wifey material. So I'm not. Yeah, I don't know. For me, if I get married, I will be lucky. If I don't get married, that doesn't mean I failed. I think things are how they're supposed to be. So it would be nice. It would be amazing if I found a woman that is in line with me. But I also have it. That's not at the top of the priority list for me right now i have a mission so she's neglecting a lot in this conversation but what i will say i love what she had to say about people not reaching their untapped potential yes if you have something burning in your heart and you're being an essential worker just to pay bills but you're not happy doing it yeah i don't agree with that i think you should go find what you're happy doing and go all in in that and let that fall where it falls but yeah don't just do this job because you know it's security because i don't think that's peaceful i don't think that's happiness for instance my father he's been a driver taxi driver bus driver but he loves what he does more than anything he loves that he works hard like he's he's someone that takes so much pride in just being a hard worker like everybody sees life different i don't like blanket statements i don't like just putting people in the box part of her conversation was very irresponsible you know i think more so to young women and even the young men that feel the pressure to live up to what they have like to live up to a woman like her you get what I'm saying? Because it's about happiness. It's about are we going to vibe? You get what I'm saying? Like, okay, let's say I was a millionaire, billionaire, whatever, right? And I hung around her and I, I'm like, oh, I'm not going to take her serious. Like, I'm do whatever I got to do to get whatever I want. I already got it set in my mind. I'm not going to take her serious. And she's just all into me. It's not going to last. It's not going to last, you know? So, I, like I said, I look at the marriage thing and the relationship thing, and I hope that God gives me the strength to not, not succumb or settle if it's not like that genuine level of happiness you know what i'm saying or just this genuine level of willingness to meet each other in the middle like if it's not that like that woman or that one that i could just feel like and i don't ever think it's that one i think it's that one that's just willing to go through the process with you like for me that's what it is if i find a woman that's willing to go through the process with me and then we align and i'm really liking her and all that but i ain't gonna lie the type of man i am i'm always gonna kind of probably be always looking at other one i don't know i ain't gonna snitch on myself i don't know i don't know so god bless man god bless that's whoever you feel me can you know I mean ebony k william i think you putting the pressure on young ladies to create a man that doesn't exist or find a man that that does exist but he might not be the one for her so you might be pushing her towards disappointment listen if i'm going to push you guys to anyone man or woman push someone that loves you how you want to be loved define how you want to be loved when you meet a person that has the potential to do that let's start working towards that you know but you got to love them back it can't just all it can't be all about you you know someone out here is ready to love and embrace love as much as you want to love and embrace love it's somebody out here for you there's too many people in this world somebody out here see love how you see love stop these one-sided love arrangements you know the love-sided love arrangements is shitty stop the one-sided love arrangements it's somebody out here that wants to be loved how you want to be loved you mean don't force shit because there's somebody out here that's ready to be on your type time if you want it bad enough it'll come It'll come. Just make sure all your, your ducks is in order. Like your shit is in line with it. Prepare yourself for what it is that you want in life. Prepare. And don't settle because you're ready. Don't settle because you're ready. Settle because they're right. Don't settle because you're ready. Don't let that go over your head. Oh, I did want to add this. The last thing I wanted to say goes in line with the next current event I want to talk about. I like what she said, mainly about you may not have untapped your full potential. And maybe she's like me and she's thinking bigger and she's thinking in the future. Like a lot of these jobs may not be here to stay with this rise in AI and technology. So a lot of these easier skill sets may be going away straightly, strictly due to technology, right? And that's why I'm going to talk about AI because if this, I see a lot of jobs going away due to technology. A lot of my friends been wanting me to speak about AI, right? And I'm like, yeah, I, I don't know which angle to talk about it. I know the hottest topic on AI is how it's going to take over the world and it's going to just like kill us and it's going to be us versus our robot and all that. I'm with that. You feel me? I'm with the whole war drone. Like, I'm with that. But it's like, 
it's so much of that. I'm not going to use my voice to just scare people. You get what I'm saying? I don't want to do that to scare you and not help you embrace AI. So I want to also add this. I've been irresponsible in telling people how to embrace AI. With the research I've done literally in less than two hours, I think I can responsibly, I can be, I can be responsible in how I tell you to embrace AI, right? First off, if you're genuinely afraid of AI, I respect that. But what do you do after being afraid? Do you just speculate and only see the worst sides of AI? Or do you understand that ever since you've been on this earth, technology has been growing and you yourself have been a part of this technology? Unless you're someone that's like, I'm not embracing these phones. I'm not embracing this internet. I'm just going to stay completely disconnected. Most likely, if you're that person, you wouldn't even be hearing this message. The truth is, AI was going to come. Machine learning, deep learning, these things are aren't new machine learning i think it was started in the 80s if i'm not mistaken i like i said on the first episode i wrote a paper about ai in 2015 about it being humanity's annihilator but obviously if i'm saying ai is humanity's annihilator and i'm writing this paper in college i have to have counter arguments i have to talk about it may remove our social harmony but i also have to discuss the benefits of ai and that's what i'm going to do now i'm not going to solely focus on the benefits of ai but i'm going to focus on the solution how can we embrace AI within our society? And I think it's really only one answer. And I kind of always knew that it was only one answer um, for the black community, the urban community. And this is the answer for pretty much everything that's a problem in our community. If you ask me, what's the number one problem in the black community? I'm going to tell you education. Education, that's it, right? But I'm not going to keep it that simple this time. City to city, state to state, neighborhood to neighborhood, school district to school district. We all have to come together and understand that these subjects are necessary to be applied from kindergarten to 12th to 12th grade. The same way reading was applied, we have to apply mathematics that are going to lead our kids towards linear algebra, statistics, calculus. These things need to be taught earlier. Basic programming. I'm going to start with basic programming. Basic programming, Python, R, C++, neural networks and deep learning, natural language processing, data science, probability. If you're not talking about how we can adjust the school curriculum to insert technology into kindergarten through 12th grade, I'm sorry, but I can't take your AI complaint serious. I literally can't. I said this on a few episodes ago. You've been complaining about social media. You got on social media. You complained about getting vaccinated and everything. A lot of y'all got vaccinated. What is the solution? I just gave it to you. We have to put the precursors of programming, web development, Software engineering, we have to put those precursors in our school curriculum. As long as they're not in our school curriculums, we're being full of shit. And now look, we can't get it in our our school curriculums. Let's say you feel like what I'm saying is just too much. I, why would you even say that? Y'all know they're not about to change the curriculum. There's a website called Udemy.com. Udemy ain't paying me a dollar to say this. So you know, like it's sincere. You can go on Udemy.com and you can look up basic programming, Python, or you can say, I want to do a class on neural networks. I want to do a class on deep learning. Now, what you can do is you can take this class or you can set your child up to take this class, right? The same way you put your kids in sports, you could put your kid in a $15, $16 class on Udemy about basic programming, right? About about the basics of neural networks and deep learning. Python, from what I've seen on Udemy, seems to be the number one programming language that's being used in this machine learning and AI advancement of technology right so whether you want to learn it or you want to demand that your child learns it for less than twenty dollars a month and like i said you to me is not paying me i just know about this because i got a brother that's into web development and software and i've done took some classes on there for things i wanted to learn previously right it's 2023 like it's not like we can't just be learning shit nowadays we could learn shit you feel me we could empower ourselves to see how can we have ai be used for us i want the kids of my future to be writing the code of the, the future generations because obviously ai is not going anywhere these cell phones these drones right here they, they they started off as like phones in a car they started off as phones in a car look at where they at now 
this is everything now. A computer, a camera, it's everything now. You feel me? Like, but I, I think y'all just want to complain or y'all just want to be afraid, and that's okay. That's okay because, like I said, if you don't know, you don't know. But like, this only took two hours of research for me to find out on God. This only took two hours. This is not really me tapping into that bag because I'm not that technical. I'm an analytical thinker, thinker, and an analytical person. But all of this stuff I just talked about, it bores me. So I'm really putting it out on the, in the world because it's somebody out here that's into science and into math and learning all of these you mean that's into learning these extremely complex ideologies and networks and everything like that that's gonna bore me i'm gonna be honest it's not gonna you know so i know my i know my strengths i know my strengths you know this is my strength communication and speaking and everything like that this is my strength you gotta work where you strong work at what you strong in yeah fact yeah stop complaining stop complaining guys like for real the ai is here to stay you've been getting prepped for it for a long time listen i just heard michael jackson do dutty wine that joint was fire you know, that joint was crazy. Like, you dirty wine now, you dirty wine. Oh, yeah. Like, and it was Michael Jackson voice. Listen, the AI thing is not going nowhere. It will be replacing jobs. You want to prep yourself or your future, your legacy, your children to be able to man these computers, to be able to write the programs for these computers. That's the solution, right? Or war. So, since y'all don't want to fight about it, let's do something about it. You can take a class and you can you can pass the class along to everybody around you. You know, everybody that you know that's scared of AI and all of that, y'all all team up, five different people, $3 a pop. Y'all take the class together. Y'all take the class on Udemy or whatever other site is out here giving you an opportunity to learn what they're learning in college or what they're learning in software engineering. And you could just dive deep into that and make yourself a master. You can become a master of basic programming, C++, Python, R, to the point that you become intermediate, then then get advanced. Take classes on deep learning. Take classes, take classes on machine learning. Take classes on neural networks. Don't just be afraid. Learn learn don't just complain do something about it what are you gonna do whatever whatever y'all come to agree with i'm gonna be with you if y'all want to go to war about it i got you you feel me i'll front line for sure you feel me and since y'all know y'all not about to do nothing that's like warlike either you take action stop putting your kids in these sports first put it like this i got this i got the easy solution just thought of it i'm not buying you no sneaks i'm not buying you nothing until you complete this class i bought a class for you you gotta learn this make it a, make it a requirement right Right? That your child learns basic programming and then reward them for learning basic programming because this AI isn't going anywhere on God. Basic programming, deep learning, neural networks. I did this research in one hour. Not to mention us all going to City Hall and make it a requirement that they add it into our curriculum. City to city. Not to mention that. But listen, if you ain't if you ain't ready to do that, that's cool. That's cool. Udemy.com, U-D-E-M-Y.com. You or your child can start learning the basic necessities of programming, the precursors of courses needed for software engineering, web development. You don't got to go to college. I'm not about to tell you go to college. I am telling you to stop complaining about AI and all that because we could do something about it. It's a lot of different ways we could go about it. It's a lot of different ways. I'm giving you what I believe is the most productive. I'm going to move forward into sales and leadership. Listen, I'm, I'm going to talk to my salesman real quick. Listen, y'all so focused on what y'all can't do. Not only are you giving me a shitty experience, you're missing out on all the opportunity that lies in front of you. I'm coming to your place of business and then you telling me you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do this, you can't do that. You already got me saying no in my brain. Like, no, 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 no. Who told you that's how you talk to people? I'm not sure if I'm able to do that. I would love to see if I can. Outside of that, is there any questions, other questions you had? Is there anything else that's been on your mind? We have these opportunities. We have a ton of opportunities. Oh, I'm so sorry to bring that up so soon. I'm so sorry. I do want to address your issue. I'm going to address your issue first. It may be complicated. I might I might have to check with a manager. I might have to do a little bit of research. This is not something I come across too often, but I would love to look and to see with that. In the meantime, it might take me a second to look into that. Is there any other questions that you had? Is there any other things that you had in your mind that you may thinking about getting accomplished? I'm going to also go over your account and see if there's anything I can offer you. Or I understand you don't want, you don't, you don't, you're not looking for any promotions. You're not looking to buy anything today. Don't buy anything from me. I don't want you to buy anything. I just want to see if I can do something. Maybe I can save you some money. I'm not going to promise anything. Listen, we're a value business. Everything that you cover on a month-to-month basis, we want to make sure that it's a value to you. So it's my job and my due diligence to look over your account and make sure everything is running. Thank you for coming in, by the way. I would love for you to keep speaking to me directly. Yeah, don't call our customer service. Speak to me directly. You salesmen are shitty. Y'all suck.
You feel me? Y'all trash. You get what I'm saying? Because if things ain't going y'all way, y'all giving these horrible experiences. Oh, I love coming to him. Even if I have a little question he wants to answer, that's how people should be talking about you. Because they're going to tell the next person about you. And they'll start selling for you. Oh, my God. My friend just told me, like, you feel me? Y'all shitty, though. Yeah, yeah. And I'm that boy. I'm that nigga. Listen, you know what I mean? I'm that nigga. You missing out on your opportunities. You missing out on your opportunities. Facts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You missing out on your opportunities. I'm going to look into this. I, I love to own. I love to own what I do. Make sure after you leave here, if you have any questions, look to speak to me directly as I'm the one who set the expectations for you. We had a conversation. It was a very intimate conversation as far as the transparency of everything that took place. If you go to customer services, a lot of times they don't fully understand everything I said or did for you. I'm not saying that you can't check in, but even if... You You'll check in with them. Make sure you, you check in with me as well. I want to make sure everything is clear. I want to make sure everything is clear. Yes. Y'all y'all shitty. You, you feel me? Y'all shitty. Yeah, y'all shitty. Y'all giving these shit experience. Dude, you're shit. Y'all not, y'all not yim sans. And I'm yim sans. Yeah, I'm yim sans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm that nigga. Hey. No, but seriously though, um, your language is terrible. Your attitudes towards thinking that there's no opportunity here is terrible. Listen, you walked into my store. I know you have a complaint. Your car is giving you trouble. Do you know anyone else that is looking for a vehicle? We are actually running a promotion next week. Highlight everything. Yeah, yeah. Highlight everything. You fucking dickhead. Y'all, y'all dumb. <laughs> you feel me? Because now you missed out on your opportunities for these referrals because now, oh no, you got to go to tech to take care of that. You got to go to tech to take care of that. Y'all shitty. <laughs> Y'all shitty. You, and you didn't even know you were shitty. But now I'm reminding you. You're trash. Listen, when you selling, everything is an opportunity. It never stops. It never stops. You fucking dickhead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It never stops. It never stops. Qualify, 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 qualify. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to ask you so many questions. It seem like I'm bothering you, you know. It's just, if I'm not letting you know what we're doing, I don't know. You might not check all your emails, but I have to let you know. I feel like it's my duty to let you know. It is my duty to let you know. Be a decent human being, but qualify. Never stop qualifying. Yeah, never, never stop qualifying. Oh, yeah, because the reason I'm bringing that up is because I was talking about to y'all about the sales process last week. It's not you talking. It's you asking questions, you fucking dickhead. Ask questions the whole time. That's the sales process. You may have to pre present information because why am I here? I want to know this. Yeah, but ask questions. I know you came in here for one car. Is it? Do you guys have a backup vehicle? Sell two cars. But don't be like, yo, let me show you my second car. So you like, y'all shitty. I'm off of you salesman. I just had to throw my little, you know what I'm saying? I'm off of you salesman. I, Cause I didn't really prepare anything. Like I don't want to just be full of shit. But I walked into a store and I was dismissed. You know, I was dismissed. I'm pretty sure if I said I wanted to buy something, they would have probably took care of me a different way. But because I was doing something else that they didn't think was a, it, it was horrible. It was a hard, y'all experiences y'all giving people is shitty. Like I'm not feeling y'all join. I'm not feeling it. No, y'all not decent and y'all can't sell because y'all don't know how to create opportunity because you're not asking questions that create opportunity. Ask me a question that's going to make me think. And after you ask me the question, what you do is you shut the fuck up and wait for me to talk and then oh I, let me see about that i think we we definitely most likely have something like you know you, you don't have to know everything and be clear when you don't know that's a wonderful question i honestly don't know the answer to that completely but i can do some research we're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about the sports though i don't know if i want to start off with lebron or canelo I know I'm going to touch on both. Give give, give LeBron his flowers. Listen, Stephen A., I don't know what you be like. Stephen A. got so much to say about people smoking weed. I, I think he smokes weed. I'm Sincerely, I think Stephen A. smoked weed. So you said LeBron is the second best player of all time. But if Stephen Curry beats him, we got to talk about removing LeBron from the Mount Rushmore. So now what, he goes from second to fifth. But he's in his 20th year in the second round. Are you crazy? Like, what's wrong with you, bro? I'm not. You, you feel me? Like, is it? Are you do? Do you just speak for clout? Do you just talk? I'm going to get off of him, bro. That was trash, bro. That was trash. That was. Tr Where's your substance? Where's your content? Ew. And y'all fighting it to keep Michael Jordan at number one. Listen, I love Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan is a nigga. Ten time scoring champion. <sighs> Michael J Michael Jordan is disgusting. He ain't played 20 years. He ain't go to 10 chips. He ain't had to play KD or Tim Duncan or Dirk. He ain't had to play Keem either. Hakeem. Yeah, he ain't had to play Hakeem in the champ. He, he beat Karl Malone in them. Yeah. I, I respect MJ. I respect MJ. I don't respect the 90s era like I respect this era. This era is 
tough. KD would have get. Let's talk about the playoffs. Can you imagine what Steph would have been doing to them in the nineties with his skill set? The Suns are up against it. Listen, I don't know. I love Devin Booker. I want to say something. I know people gonna take it as blasphemous if you're a sports fan. When I look at Devin Booker's skill set as a shooting guard all time, like remove the trinkets, remove just just look at the player. That's that's what I do when I watch sports. I just look at what I see. Like I don't be all hype into oh he got this many chips in his. Deal. I just look at what I see. What what do y'all see when y'all see Devin Booker play? Because what I see from a skill set, I'm going to move on. The Suns is up against it. Devin Booker and KD score 86 points together to get that win in game three. That's like beyond, you feel me? Like, that's incredible. That's incredible. Yeah, yeah, that's incredible. Y'all know I low-key be hating on Jokic. I'm a hater on Jokic. The Nuggets look like the team to beat period they look like the most complete team they the deepest i love their offense um the ball is always moving majority of the times what is a point center listen i'm gonna give Jokic his flowers Jokic. what is a point center when did they make that up they made that position up he made it he made it up he's a nigga like i'm just a hater but i, I can admit when i'm hating but it's because like you know listen and be one mvp what i say and beat is the MVP. So I really don't care what the Sixers do. You feel me? Like, I really, I'm not caring. I'm not caring. And beat is the MVP. Yeah, yeah. And beat is the MVP. The Suns are up against it. Monty Williams, about time. Like, I was on the, damn, the Suns ain't got nobody. You finally want to put Terrence Ross in? Listen, TJ Warren, be TJ Warren from the bubble, cuz. Cause you were dropping 40 in the bubble, 30s in the bubble. Like, they, I ain't even know they had, they had y'all. Cause he wasn't playing y'all. I really didn't know y'all was on the team. So I'm not going to count out the Suns. The first two games, it was way, the second game, I was hot. I couldn't watch the end. I had tweeted about it. I couldn't watch the end. To be honest, I've been more in tune with the West than the East, but I couldn't watch the end. It was too many, like, they wasn't getting no fouls. That was, that was very disturbing for me. I'm not going to lie. Like, that was really disturbing my piece. Yeah, I'm not fucking with that. I don't know what the refs was like. They only shot five free throws. The Nuggets had 21. It was a hard fought game. Why couldn't it just, whatever. They won game three. Um, That's what's more important than anything right now. They won game three. Monty Williams, show up. Mike Malone is looking like he's doing his thing. Monty Williams, all you got to do is show up. They won two at home. You win two at home. And then let's start the series again. Uh, Yeah, sometimes there's a little bit too much, too many one-on-ones for my liking, but it is what it is. Get, keep the ball moving. Devin Booker, though. Oh, my God. I've been on the Devin Booker wave since he scored 70. I'm not going to lie. Since he scored 70, literally KD's. What KD said in the post game about Devin Booker is everything I've been telling my homies. Like it's crazy. Like so, I understand. This is why I do. Like I'm not if a Nick if I know what I'm doing and how I be keeping up because I don't be into like the NBA. Like I'm into boxing and all that. But I literally do what KD said he do. Like I look at the box scores and I go watch the individual highlights of the players. Like that's how I be learning. That's how I be knowing. Like you get what I'm saying. Over the years, I've been doing that for so long. Damn near since like 2014, 2015. Since Dame came in the league. I I've been on that type of time with all the niggas. So I be knowing, I be knowing niggas. Like, I don't be knowing everybody, but I be knowing the people that's somebody in basketball that's doing something. Stephen A, the little comment you made about LeBron, like, yo, ESPN, if y'all hiring, I, I got you. I'm cousin, you know what I mean? Like, he's a black man, no, I support him. He's just trash. LeBron is about to be the best ever for me. I ain't gonna lie, I still kind of got it at Michael Jordan is the best ever, but even though I got LeBron as the GOAT, just because of the totality of what LeBron has done, I don't even think the GOAT conversation is a debate no more for me. LeBron is the greatest player of all time. Is he the best? It's hard, it's hard. I gotta really, really think about that, you know? Is he the second best for sure it's just this brian could do everything because think about this right to me this is what made brian bona fide the best player ever if brian came in how magic johnson came in and he was just a point guard brian be the best player ever it would be nothing to talk about you know but he was humble enough to come in as a small forward and be a point forward so i think that's the only reason you could even make it a debate brian is really plays like a point guard sometimes sometimes he plays like a shooting guard sometimes like a small forward he's been playing power forward mainly in the playoffs like what are we talking about he could defend in all five positions yeah brian is the best <laughs> yeah brian is the best ever I'm, i don't care like he's the best ever yeah he could do everything no like he can do everything he's mr everything and he's don't gotta be great at just solely one thing you get what i'm saying as far as pure basketball player playing against lebron when he has true support just like any other great player needed true support 
You feel me? When LeBron has true support, you got to focus on everything. You got to you have to be playing the best basketball to beat LeBron. I got more theories on it, but I don't want to slander nobody. You feel me? Or make people get in their feelings. But I'm going to just say this, right? As far as I'm concerned, when when Brian used to play Kobe, I never used to watch them two play each other and not walked away watching the ge- their their games and be like yo kobe just way better than brian i never had that experience and i never had the experience to say that yo brian is just way better than kobe it just always felt like oh those two niggas is tough and if you know anything about basketball kobe is the more skilled than michael jordan i don't know do what you want with that i think y'all just listen to espn all day like i don't think y'all think you get what i'm saying and brian just talked about that and i just put that in my story this is sunday by the way i'm recording this but yeah brian just talked about that he just he just said like to the younger players watch the game put it on mute listen to music just watch the game for me i would take it a step further forget about the names don't think about the allure when you watch any sport just look at what you just look at it analyze it for what it is i ain't gonna lie to i gotta cook these motherfuckers anthony davis and jordan Poole. I think that you niggas is out of pocket. I think y'all bombing like four or five joints. I think y'all playing the video games too much, right? Right. And then I think it'd be like six o'clock and then they'd be like, yo, we got a game today. Oh shit. And then y'all just put your shit on and run to the, it's the playoffs. You fucking dickheads. Like cool out, cool out. You know what I'm saying? Cause I'm seeing Jordan Poole, your, your, your shots are short. Like you just all over the place. Listen, I understand you playing. Bro, you just won a chip last year. Settle down. He's not going to settle down. Y'all, I'm going to be honest. He's, he's He's not gonna settle down. I put money on Jordan Poole all last playoffs and just was disappointed. Like, and I kept watching how he plays, and I'm like, oh, he's gonna do one or two things. He's gonna shoot a three, or he's gonna drive to the rim. And he's gonna do both things at full speed. The East is more interesting, though, to be honest. And it's crazy. The East, no, they're not more interesting. I'm lying. I ain't gonna lie. I've been rooting for. I don't know. The West been actually more interesting to me. But the East is interesting in the sense of like, I don't know. Embiid won MVP. I don't care what happens. Embiid won MVP. I, he don't got to win a chip. He can win a chip next year. Feel me? We got Brian and Steph playing. We got KD, Devin Booker going. You know I mean, like, I ain't gonna lie. I want to see somebody from the West get that John, if, unless it's the Sixers. So it's like the West or the Sixers or even Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler need a chip. Like, just so y'all can put respect on his name because I got another John, like based off of these playoffs, like showing up night in, night out. If I I was a boy, I tell I'm gonna just tell it like it is. The best player has been Jokic, Jimmy Butler, Steph. No, Jokic, Jimmy Butler, Devin Booker, Steph, Brian, KD. That's the best nigga based off the playoffs. And then you could talk about Embiid, Jalen Brown, Tatum. You feel me? In that order, too. Yeah, yeah, in that order. Jalen Brunson. Jalen Brunson to me has had a better playoff run than Tatum and Jalen Brown, if you ask me. But what do I know? I'm just a nigga that's just, you know I mean? I ain't nobody. But Canelo, Canelo, um, yeah, Canelo won last night. I'm not surprised. It was a tough fight. You know, he did really good. I kind of caught the highlights. I don't even think, I didn't watch it live. I'm not going to lie to you. But I always knew it was going to be a tough fight. It was a great style matchup. Because, like I said, I'm not heavy into the allure when I'm watching sports. I look at what I'm watching. Like, I just look at it as it is. I see Canelo Alvarez. Canelo Alvarez was a baby before he was a superstar. So, when they picked him up as a baby, they wasn't like, yo, you're the superstar. You're mil-. Like, he wasn't born a millionaire. You know what I'm saying? Like, he had to work to get there. So, like, when I'm watching him, I'm just seeing who he is as a boxer. And then I went and seen who John Ryder was as a boxer. I watched both of their last fights live. So, I'm like, you know what? Um, I seen John Ryder fight Zach Parker. I seen Canelo fight uh, Triple G. And I was like, this is going to be a great fight. I tweeted that in March um, because I knew then everybody was hating on the fight. And I get it. You, he's hoarding the belt. It is what it is. He earned that status. Canelo got over sixty fights. Yeah, so he's Canelo. Like you, you get what I'm saying? Okay, he's not the face of boxing no more. It's Tank. It's been like that for like the last since he fought Plant. You know, I think I might have tweeted. It, I might haven't. I think Canelo. I said something months ago. Like Canelo peaked out since he fought Danny Jacobs. Like I mean, but I be watching boxing. I don't just be all like into that. You feel me? I don't want to see Canelo fight Bivol. If he fights Bivol, I think it's a wrap. Yeah, Canelo time might be up. I don't know. The way they talking, like what I feel like him and Eddie Reynoso needs, they they need they need somebody black to show them like how to jab and you know, they need I don't think they're embracing how good Bival is. So like I said, if as long as Canelo wanna stay where he is, and I'm not saying that the Benavidez fight is any better. I think he's really stuck between a rock and a hard place. I think Canelo's best idea to stay relevant is like go fight Jam- Jamal Charlo. And I'm not saying that 
Jamal Charlo won't beat him. I just don't think it would be as bad as what Benavidez or Bivol would do to him. I think he's in it for a long shot with, with Benavidez or Bivol. I think for the style matchup, Bivol is going to be a harder fighter for for Canelo, even though I think like I think Benavidez beats Bivol, but I think Canelo has a bigger chance to beat uh Benavidez than he has a chance to beat Bivol. Because if you pay attention to boxing styles making fights, I'm not about to break down the styles, but you know, I kind of don't be wrong on these things, to be honest. But yeah, so um, Canelo was the best. He's not. It's okay. I know he's kind of younger, but he got 60 fights. He became a pro at 16. He had a phenomenal career. I love Canelo's run. He got an amazing career. As far as I'm concerned, the allure makes him more of the best, but uh, makes him more of one of the best Mexican fighters ever. For me, it's not the allure. It's, it's how he progressed as a fighter, like what he started out as to what he became. That's what makes him one of the best Mexican fighters in the world. I'm not going to say that he is or isn't, you know, but he truly progressed as a boxer. He plateaued a couple years back. That's fine. It happens. You know, he still made himself competitive. They still did what they could. To, but, you know, out with the old, in with the new. It's, it's part of life. Canelo Alvarez is not LeBron James. It's, only, it's not a lot of LeBron James or Tom Brady's. Like, it's really not, you know, or Floyd Mayweather's. It's just not a lot of those. Those are very, very special people, and we got to treat them as such, you know, and we, we got to pay respects to those type of athletes. You know, we have to but as far as i'm concerned canelo had a great career he had a great career it's tank davis's time it's shakur stevenson's time it's errol spence's time it's terence crawford's time you know devin haney's time you get what i'm saying it's a lot of other guys time so i'm gonna break down boxing a little bit more um next week devin haney's about to fight lomachenko that's a great fight i'm not gonna break it down now obviously i'll be rooting for devin haney lomachenko is another one of them fighters I, I was i hate on too espn pushed him down our throat i wasn't you push anybody down my you mean pause like i'm not going to be feeling that at all i'm not going to be feeling you or just you telling you forcing fully telling me this is the best person in the world they're the best they're the best they're the best like yo i got eyes like i could see who's the best and who's not the best like loma ain't for a second been better than bud ain't for a second been better than spence loma ain't loma ain't better than danny garcia and that's no disrespect to danny garcia keith thurman like he's not better than them to me like those are hall of famers to me everybody i name like and I just and I only just went off well to each just now. Like, stop playing with my intelligence. Feel me? You're not better than Chocolatito. Like, come on. He definitely not better than Juan Francisco Estrada. Like, but they just forcing him down our throats. Like, you mean pause once again? You're not better than Usyk and like, and they from the same country. So it's just like, stop playing with me. You feel me? Stop playing with me. Who beat Usyk again? Like, what are we talking about? Loma's the best fighter in the world. He's better than me. You niggas burn me out. Y'all burn me out and y'all y'all shit jobs. You shitty at y'all jobs. Y'all shitty. So, yeah, we're going to break down some more boxing next week. Let me see if there's anything else I wanted to tell y'all before I leave. I think I touched everything. Pause again. Matter of fact, that's it, y'all. That's it. That's all I got. Um, I love y'all. I'll be coming stronger next week. I promise. Kind of rushed this, Um, but it was on my heart. Like I said, I'm committed. I'm going to show up every time. Like I said, every episode ain't going to be the best, but I'm going to keep trying my best to be the best version I can be for y'all. I definitely feel like it was still some value in here. So God bless, man.